As we step into 2024, it's safe to say that we're pretty lucky to witness some incredibly rapid technological advancements. One of the standout innovations in the world of cars includes electric motors, hybrid engines, hydrogen engines, and more. What's even more exciting is that this progress isn't just about four-wheeled vehicles. It's also making its way into the world of two-wheelers, showing that this tech train is unstoppable. But despite vehicles using IC engines facing fierce competition from the engines we just mentioned, the reality is that there has yet to be any engine capable of surpassing the reign of IC engines, starting with its distinctive sound. And its reliable technology compared to electric motor with their exorbitant battery prices, not to mention other factors. This assessment isn't just applicable to us as customers or end users. The extensive century-long research has made even automotive companies or manufacturers hesitant to abandon IC engine technology. In fact, as of the time of creating this video, research on IC engines hasn't slackened. Rather, it's become more serious. One of its innovations, of course, is an engine we're going to discuss in this video. Claimed to be far superior to conventional engines, this innovation signifies a leap forward in automotive technology. Well, to quench our curiosity, let's dive right in and compare this engine directly with its predecessor, the conventional engine. Firstly, we're going to discuss the aspect of thermal efficiency. As we know, in conventional engines, during the combustion process, the connecting rod tends to be in a slanted position. Of all the steps in a conventional internal combustion engine, the combustion step is the process that requires a significant amount of pressure, thereby imposing the greatest load on the engine. To illustrate, when the combustion process occurs, the force from the combustion moves vertically through the pushed piston, driving it downward. But it doesn't stop there. This energy is then directed towards the connecting rod, which sits at an inclined position. In this scenario, the connecting rod receiving this load seems to try to push the rod towards one side of the cylinder wall or cause twisting. Naturally, this eventually intensifies the pressure of the piston against the cylinder wall, thus reducing the engine's efficiency. This happens due to the increased friction experienced by the piston. And as one might imagine, with this friction, it means there's wasted energy, because a portion of the energy thrust is inevitably directed towards the piston, undergoing friction. Furthermore, additional issues arise, namely irregular wear on the engine's cylinder walls. On the other hand, in the engine we'll be discussing in this video, the issue we mentioned earlier finds resolution. This engine employs a connecting rod that always maintains a vertical position. Yet, it manages to convert that vertical motion into horizontal movement, effectively minimizing the twisting effect typically encountered. Consequently, this reduces friction on its cylinder walls. Furthermore, given both the connecting rod and piston move vertically, we can unify them into a single component and eliminate the pin connecting the piston to its conrod. With these advantages, theoretically, it wouldn't just improve efficiency, but also bolster strength and reliability at this point. This is because we've reduced the number of moving parts between the connecting rod and piston. Next, let's discuss the power output this engine can generate. Apart from reducing friction on one of the cylinder walls, the technical advantage of this connecting rod mechanism is that the combustion duration the engine can manage. This will offer benefits across all RPM ranges, especially at high RPMs, which typically have shorter combustion durations. Now, some might wonder, how can a slightly different assembly structure like this engine provide extra combustion duration? It's achievable by altering the piston's motion resulting from the change in the connecting rod. Now let's take a look at how the connecting rod in a conventional engine plays its role. Specifically, when the connecting rod changes its position from upright to inclined, or when it pulls the piston from 0 to 90 degrees. As we can see, the distance between the piston and crank journal shortens due to the inclined position of the conrod. 
naturally this difference provides a bit of acceleration when the conrod pulls the piston. This means in this condition the piston dwell time decreases. Now contrasting this is the unique engine we're discussing, the Scotch yoke engine. As we observe, when it operates, its connecting rod never encounters an inclined position. It always stays in a perpendicular position. This means the piston doesn't experience additional acceleration when the connecting rod pulls the piston downwards. In other words, this condition will also increase the piston's dwell time at the top dead center, which as we know, is where the combustion peak occurs with the heaviest mechanical load. By keeping the piston longer at this point, it significantly improves the utilization of energy from combustion. And finally, about the engine balance. Why is this Scotch yoke claimed to have better balance compared to a conventional engine? The answer remains the same. It's all due to its connecting rod. As we've mentioned before, in a regular conventional engine, its connecting rod tends to pull the piston downwards more swiftly. Consequently, the side effect of this downward pull is that the piston moves up and down at varying speeds caused by the angle, weight, and acceleration of the engine. And this is where the issue arises because whenever there's acceleration and mass, it means there's a certain force involved. This force is commonly referred to as secondary force. This secondary force can cause the engine to experience imbalance. And this imbalance is the primary cause of vibrations in the engine. To mitigate these vibration issues or secondary forces, manufacturers usually install counterweight masses to reduce the vibrations that occur when the engine operates. Now, when we compare this to the Scotch yoke engine, with its connecting rod always in an upright position and never tilting, it possesses its own advantage. It can minimize these secondary vibrations by having two cylinders balancing each other without the need for counterweight masses. Therefore, under these conditions, this engine operates more smoothly. Now, here's the big question. Why hasn't this engine been used in transportation? or perhaps in the industry? And why is the Scotch yoke engine relatively unknown? The Scotch yoke engine itself isn't a new breakthrough in engine technology. In fact, the yoke engine has been used in several types of engines, like steam engines, heating engines, and even by an individual named Russell Bork in the 1920s, who experimented with the Scotch yoke designed to create a two-stroke engine for vehicles. However, despite Russell building several functional prototypes, this design never entered mass production. The reason primarily lies in three drawbacks of the connecting rod. Firstly, the rod tends to have several weak points, especially at the bottom. Besides encountering complex frictional forces, this vulnerable and thin section faces heavy workload during the combustion process. Even slight wear and tear here can lead the engine to operate noisily. Secondly, a sliding block connecting the connecting rod and crankshaft along the rod's track actually induces sliding friction. This sliding friction inherently impacts the engine's mechanism negatively due to its complicated application, potentially causing increased engine workload. If we observe the vertical motion of the piston during combustion, it's forced to convert to a horizontal direction. Thirdly, the weight of the connecting rod itself is heavier. While there's a reduction in parts at the piston end, the added weight of this connecting rod is significantly greater. In essence, while the engine boasts advantages like improved piston dwell time and claimed smoother vibrations, it comes at the cost of these three aforementioned factors. And when we look at the design of a conventional engine, we won't find sliding friction anywhere. This is because all parts rotate uniformly. And certainly, the crank pin and big end in a conventional engine are much stronger than a long, thin groove on the Scotch yoke rod. And that's the technical explanation regarding the Scotch yoke engine. Apart from its advantages, it also has its own shortcomings. A brief pause. However, despite this, a company named Alphadan, established two years ago, is currently working on developing the Scotch yoke engine using modern technology. 
They plan to introduce the Scotch Yoke inline four engine to compete in the market soon, indicating its potential competitiveness in the future. Regarding our personal opinion, this engine will face challenges due to its numerous drawbacks. And even if a better solution emerges in the future, such as advanced forge casting techniques, increasing production costs might hinder its application in commercial vehicles. Ok, that's all we have to share in today's video. What do you think about this engine? Do you think it's worth further development? Write your thoughts in the comments section below. We'd love to hear your opinion.